Now that you have learned the consonants and maybe uh, are still learning them, memorizing them, now we're going to start the vowels, um, which the vowels are a lot easier. There's only 13. And I know that sounds like a lot, but it's actually not so bad. For example, in English, the A, we have five, and the A makes three different sounds. A, A, and A, uh, and A, uh, so four sounds. Um, but in Hebrew, it's not like that. It's much simpler. And actually, as we're learning the vowels, it'll help reinforce the consonants. So for example, I'll just take a random word. Let's do Adam, which means man. Um, so we've got an Aleph, and a Dalid, and a final Mem. And so that's Adam, but um, we're just assuming the vowels there. So that was the original way of writing it. And what happened was later people came in and said, we should uh, make a system for including. So they put little dots and dashes in and the, mostly below, occasionally above the letters. So for this, we've got um, Adam, two little tiny T's, um, which that, that vowel is called a kometz. So that way you know this is an edim, or this is odom, this is adam. So you end up reading the, the consonant, then down to the vowel, then move on to the next. So, and this syllable, this is an open syllable, uh, this is a syllable a, and this is a closed syllable because it has an ending, dom. So that's the comments, that's um, one of the vowels. Now, <clears throat> what happened was, as the language was developing, occasionally, um, before, um, before this system came about, they would use a consonant, just like we do in English, a consonant to work together with a vowel. For example, in English, we have the name um, Sarah, right? We have the name Sarah. If you had a system with no vowels, you would write sa ra. Um, that, that was how they wrote it. But they thought, you know, if we put an H here, that would help give a clue that it's an ah. Because at the end of an ah, there's a natural little H as you're fading off that. Ah. I don't know if you can hear that. But um, so they started adding these. And um, so in other words, the, the point is, you don't need to know historically why that is. But the point is, occasionally, there will be, just like in English, a vowel and consonant will work together to make one sound. Um, and, and you know, there are some girls I've known who spell their name this way. It's still pronounced the same, Sarah with an H, Sarah with no H. Um, but in, the point is, in Hebrew, just like in English, there's sometimes when you have a vowel and a consonant that work together to make one sound. Um, so um, that's our next vowel that we're going to learn. We had the comets, and then um, when it works together with a hey, it's called a comets hey. So that's kind of nice. You don't need to learn a new term for that. So I'll take an example consonant. Let's just say bait. We'll put a dot in it to make it a b sound. And you add a comets, and you've got ba. Um, now, you, sometimes you'll see a comets hey, and it makes the same sound ba. And you just have to remember in your mind, think of it as that these two together. That's one vowel, a comets hey. Um, that's important. Uh, it'll become important later that you think of that um, not as vowel consonant, or not as consonant, vowel consonant, but you just think of it as consonant, vowel. And the word that they gave for these is mater, mother. They were their mater lexiones, so mothers of reading. They added these letters um, to help people read before they had a vowel system. So they were just starting to develop a vowel system, but because of things that happened in their history, they never fully developed it. So we've learned two vowels so far, the comets and the comete. Um, those are the first two on your list on page 11 in your notes. And now there's another, um, another vowel we're going to learn, and 
we've talked about it before, but uh, it is just um, a shortened form of it. It's just, it's called a patak. It's just a line, and it makes an ah sound. So all three of the first three we've learned, kamete, kamets, and patak, all make the same sound, ba. Um, the way you can remember that is the little line is like the little wooden thing that the doctor puts on your tongue and tongue depressor and says, say ah. He pushes down your tongue. So that's just a, a way, helpful way to remember that the line just says ah. And this is a longer ah, and this is a very long ah. So if you look at the bottom chart on page 11, you'll see that they're listed uh, according to vowel length and in vowel class. So um, not only have we learned three vowels now, um, comets, comets hey, and patak, um, we've also learned the A-class vowels. Now, the vowels are divided in classes um, because it's kind of complicated, but vowels sometimes change. When you put the accent or you add new letters, the vowel might change a little bit. But if you can think of the vowels in classes, oh, the A-class vowels, and the, it's nice, the A-class vowels, they all make the exact same sound. Um, but oh, if I, you know, if I see... Um, if I see a uh, comet's hey, and they put another, put some kind of ending on this word, and now all of a sudden, I've got that, and I'm like, wonder why I'm used to seeing that with a comet's hey. Why does it have this patak here? Well, oh, they're in the same class. It might have changed to that. <clears throat> so, and um, in your notes, it just says a class, but I prefer to think of it as a little picture. Uh, a class vowels. I'll, I'll draw it over here. An A-class vowel, your mouth is a tall mouth because you say ah. No matter which, whether you're saying patak comments or comments hey, you're saying ah, and you open your mouth. So, um, <clears throat> so I draw little pictures for them. Now, why don't we, um, <clears throat> why don't we go ahead and learn? It's called IE class, but um, I call it a wide mouth vowel. So you can draw these little pictures in your notes. Um, it's a wide mouth, mouth vowel where your mouth goes this way because if you're making an E or an A, an E, an A, or an E, you pull. <clears throat> it actually happens inside your mouth, but it's hard for me to demonstrate that. But you're going E, E, E. So those, those vowels, those sounds, E, E, and E, uh, and A. <clears throat> those four sounds. Uh, so those are all those. And <clears throat> in this class, We've got some. Um, we've got a couple tricky things. There's more, and there is um, two of the the vowel consonant things that work together are the maters. Um, so um, we'll start by the easiest one. We got a just a random consonant. Um, I'll pick a a bait for now. And the vowel is just a little dot. If you see a dot under it, it's an I sound, like a lowercase i. Um, it's kind of nice because our English lowercase i involves a dot. So that's a way to help remember. Oh, if I see that, so that's I. So this together is bi. Now, typically, you see the short vowels in a closed syllable, which means there's something there that ends it. So, um, so I'll put a random letter there. How about a, how about a tau? So bit. So this says bit. Now, if this was a, a, a comets, it would say bot. If it was a patak, it would say bot. But, um, <clears throat> but we're learning the name of that letter is the hyric. Uh, so we're learning this little hyric symbol right there. It's just a dot. So bit. Uh, and you remember that with the lowercase i dot to help you remember, oh, that makes an is sound. Uh, it is important to know that it's called a hyric, but it's more important to know uh, what sound it makes. Uh, there's another short vowel and with three dots, and that's a segel. The way you can remember that the three dots makes a segel, uh, an a eh sound, is the sound it makes. The way to remember that is you could think of it sort of as like a lowercase English e, right? See how the three dots can sort of make that? that the whole point of that is just to help you remember, oh, three dots makes an a eh sound. It's not an English e. English was not a language yet when this was made, but it's just a, a way to help an American or an English speaker remember that 
this sound makes an S sound. So that would be bet. If there was just one dot there, it'd be bit. With those three in that shape, it's bet. So we learned the segel. So now we've got quite a few that we've learned so far. We've got the, um, we've got the kamate, it's on your list. We've got the kamats, we've got the patak. We've got, now in a new class, we've got the hirik, and we've got the segel. Those are the short vowels in that class. Now, um, there's a long vowel, and it's, uh, this class tends to use the dots a lot. The long vowel is just two dots. That's a seire. And that, as you can guess, makes a, the seire makes an A sound. So that would be bait. Now, because that's long, it's often not in a closed syllable. It's often at the end, bay. And you can tell that bay has a, it's, it trails off. Uh, you can you can put these in close syllables. All these rules are generalizations that I'm giving you. But the tsere makes an A sound. That's all you need to remember. Um, so this is these are short. Um, <clears throat> this uh, tsere is I'll put add the tsere to our list of vowels that we're learning. The tsere is long. Now this is one that can be used in a mater. You put a um, you put a yod, which is makes a y sound after it, and those two work together and we call it a tsere yod. These two symbols work together, this vowel and this consonant work together to make one vowel, tsere yod. It's very important that you think of it that way. Now, we do the same exact thing in English, right? Our English word, they, well, what's going on there is that this, this e and this y are working together to make one sound, a, they. So, um, it, the, reason for that, that we use a Y and they use a Yod, um, is because when you make an A sound, it's impossible not to end it without a little Y, right? You hear that? They. It's the closing of that A. It's really hard to say A. The natural way to end the A as your mouth relaxes it makes that Y sound. So they're hearing that, they're like, oh, you, you know, um, before they develop this vowel system, they're like, how can we show that that's an A? Well, we have a, a, a Y letter, a Yod, so let's put that there. And then later when they develop the system, they're showing that that consonant there is really being used as a vowel. That's why we think of it as one. Now, the, um, so the, <clears throat> so the, Say Ray, now we learn another vowel. I said there's 13. Uh, they're not that hard because a lot of them, you know, are doing du double duty. And the, the Tse Ray and the Tse Ray Yod. We also learn the Hirik. Um, and that is used together in a Hirik Yod. Now this one is unique in that it makes a new sound. All the other ones that work together with a consonant, they keep the same sound, which is nice. But this one, the Hirik Yod, you really need to remember this one. When you see a hirik yod, that's, it, that's the, just the dot that makes i put together with a yod, it changes the sound. A hirik yod makes an e sound, a very long i. So just the same way that i in machine makes that e sound, hirik yod, that makes an e sound. And the reason that's so important is because it is used as, it's used all the time. Um, and part of the reason why it's used so much is because part of their plural, like we, we add an S, typically sometimes an ES, right? Fox says, sometimes we add an ES. Well, part of their plural uses the Hirik Yod. So uh, if you take a, a Hebrew word, let's just do the Hebrew word melech. Uh, M, Mem, Lamed, Kaf. It's a final Kaf there. So they um, would put two segels there. Melek, that means king. The way you can remember that is MLK, Martin Luther King. Melek means king. Mem, Lamed, Kaf with two segels. That means king. Now when they want to make that plural, they add something to the end, just like we add S's to the end. Now, of course, since it's, there's something on it, it's not a final cough anymore, it's a regular cough. Um, but the plural ending uses Hirik Yod plus a final mem. 
So im, these two work together. Let's get green here. These two work together to make one vowel here at Yod, making an e sound, and that's a final mem. So im is the plural. So melakim is kings. <clears throat> But it's important that you remember Hirakyod makes an E sound. That's the main thing you need to learn from that. <clears throat> so already we've learned um, everything in the wide mouth vowel class, the IE class. Um, and there are, <clears throat> just to remember the lengths, we had short, long, and very long. Here we have two shorts, only one long, and two very long. Very long basically means it's working together with a consonant. <laughs> so now there's just one more vowel class to go, and that's the O U class. The um, yeah, so and that is you can guess from my little face chart when you put your mouth together in a little tiny circle. Ooh. Um, so we'll draw a little face chart with a little tiny circle there, because when you make an O or an ooh, you, you bring your lips together in, in a small area. That's how we make that. So, um, the first one we need to learn, and <laughs> it is unfortunate, but um, that here uh, the vowel doesn't go below the letter. Um, so there's our, our bait, um, and they put it up and to the left. So you see that holum, that vowel is called holum. You say bow. You say bow. So, and just like in English, where we can write bow, like Bo Jackson, you can write bow. Um, you could also write it same sound, bow. They do the same thing. They use their vav, which is their their w, their w sound. Um, in ancient times, they said w, um, because when you say bow. You can hear that you, you can't end, it's, you almost can't end an O without that W sound being there. So um, back before they had the vowels, they were, they were just writing this, their vav, which I just make as a straight line, but for the purposes of just right now, I'll just add that little flourish. They were saying, bo, how can we show people that it's not ba, it's bo, oh, we hear that W, we'll add this W. But now that, um, <clears throat> now that we've got a vowel system, they'll, they'll put that uh, dot right over top of the O. Don't, don't ever think of that as an I. That's a, that's a holum vav. This, this holum and this vav work together <clears throat> to make one vowel sound. It's very long, a mater, as they called it, um, a holum vav. So we just learned two vowels there <clears throat> in a new class. In the OU class, um, the, the small mouth, um, we learned holum. Remember that goes above whatever letter you've got. Even I'll put a mem here. That'd be mo right there. Whatever vowel you've got, I'll just make a squiggle because any any sorry, same vowel. Whatever consonant you've got there, you have a dot to the top left. It makes an o sound. That's the holum. Now you also you get some consonant, some random consonant here, and then you get a holum vav that also makes an o. It's just very long. So we learn the holum and the holum vav. Um, I won't. Um, I won't put that. Create. I'll, I'll put. A, I'll put a bait there. Um, so bow. And bow. We learn two more. Um, <clears throat> there's a, There's uh, some short. So we got a long and a very long. I'll do the short ones, and you can see all these lengths in the chart at the bottom of page eleven. Um, there's just, there's really just um, three more vowels to go and we're done. <clears throat> the next one, short vowel, is a kibbutz. Makes an uh or an uh sound. Um, so, and it's three dots in descending order. It's not a very common vowel. <clears throat> you will see it very rarely, but you will see it sometimes. So, kibbutz uh, is a short vowel. It's in the OU class, the small mouth class. And, um, it's, the classes are important because if you're used to seeing this, um, this um, one of these, and all of a sudden you're seeing it in a word and you're like, kibbutz, I'm used to seeing that word um, with a longer vowel. Well, if it's short, it could be shortened because they, when they shorten, 
they stay in their same class. Uh, don't worry about that for now, just try to remember that the kibbutz makes an uh sound, so that'd be buh, um, or buh, um, depending on <clears throat> what, um, well, there's different areas of Jewish Hebrew speakers all over the world, and uh, they've, there's some dialectical differences. <clears throat> okay, so the kibbutz. However you want to remember that, a kibbutz is a community living together, um, and sometimes they go downhill and they don't, they don't do too good. So you can remember that. Uh, three dots together, but I'm getting, I'm getting tired of this communal living thing. I don't know. It's just something to help you remember that three dots like that is a kibbutz makes an uh. Okay, now, unfortunately, oh, and this is short, so it's typically going to have something to end it, you know, some other consonant. So, uh, boom, um, or but, or... Um, uh, maybe um, uh, maybe a bus. Um, that's a samek there. That's short. There's another short vowel, and this this is annoying. It's very rare though that this symbol. It's the comets. That's an A class vowel. Ah, um, can also used to make an o an o u sound. So that is the Kametz ha, uh, Hatuf. So the Kametz Hatuf is actually an O kind of sound. Now I know you're thinking, this is really confusing. But we do the same thing in English, right? Think about this. T-A-U-G-H-T, -T, taught. B-O-U-G-H-T, bought. So you got, there's, there's some overlap between A's and O's. Uh, you, you see that coming out in, in English. That's my only point. Um, and this letter is very rare. And you know, if you miss, miss it and you pronounce it as an ah instead of an aw, aw, it doesn't matter. I mean, I mean, if you advance in Hebrew and you're you know, reading scholarly Hebrew journals, then you're really going to need to know that. But for right now, just remember there are times when this is an aw, more of an o sound. And it's just technically it's a different vowel. It's the comet top two. But um, there's really only one word um, that, that, that you'll see that in commonly. Uh, and we can talk about that when we learn that vocab word. Okay, that means there's only one vowel left to teach you, and it's very long. So let's see, we added some short ones. We added the kibbutz, and we added um, the comet hatuf. And the last one is another very long, and it uses, let me draw my, um, my bait, because it's hard to say vowels without a consonant before them, so I'll just put this, b, uh, it, it uses uh, the vav again, but the dot's in the middle. That letter is called a shurek. So try not to think of that as a, um, a vav with a doubling dot in it. Try to think of it as its own vowel, shurek. And that makes an oo sound. Waiter, and you can hear the W, right? Oo. You can hear that W at the end of oo. Um, that's why they use that again. But the way to remember that shurek is the dot in the middle, it's the only vowel where the dot's in the middle. Uh, you got, you know, when there's a car wreck, two things come together in, in wreck. So you got two things and they meet in the middle and they wreck there. So anyway, uh, shurek. <clears throat> um, that's the last vowel you need to know, and that's all the vowels. And so you can practice, you can look at your vocab list and practice pronouncing them now that you know all the sounds. Um, I'll give you one example word and we'll be done with this video. Um, how about this? This is the word that means good or beautiful, and it is tet. Holom Vav, Beit, Tov. There's no doubt there, so it makes a V sound. Tov. So this is your vowel. Uh, this word means good or beautiful. Um, that's a Holom Vav, Tov. So you can go through your vocab and practice pronouncing those, um, and that you get you know every sound now. You got it all. You got all the consonants, you got all the vowels.